Dryden, it's great to have you. So uh, explain overall, are you, you fundamentally bullish or bearish for next year? Well, it's great to be here. I mean, we're fundamentally fundamentally cautiously bullish, if you'd say that. And a lot of it depends on the pathway of, of as you said, the P's. Where are we on the pause of the Fed and where are we on the peace in Ukraine? We think we've seen the peak on inflation rates uh, and that those are beginning to come down, but they're probably not coming down at the rate that the Fed would want. I mean, the old adage is don't fight the Fed, but nobody really told the consumer that. So there's, there's a lag period of time of six or eight months uh, before really budgets begin to show, both that companies, the Fed can change it in a day, markets react in an hour. You know, consumers react in months and companies react in months. So we really think that it's going to take a clear signal that we have paused uh, on rate hikes mm -hmm. uh, before we're going to get, you know, what I would say is move from casually or cautiously bullish to significantly bullish moving into next year. Because I think there's risk uh, of the Fed kind of going, you know, too high for too long sure. before they pause. I don't think we peak, but I think we need to pause. Well, and maybe the way to translate all this is, is just quite simply into the stock picks that you're recommending as a result. And you've got some defense names. Uh, Consumer-wise, you've got Walmart, which kind of goes back to the trade-down comments our last guest was making. You also have LVMH um, and then ASML Holdings, which is you know kind of you know more of a technology play, if you want to call it that. But sure. wh what do these picks illustrate about how you expect the markets to perform, and why do these names jump out to you? We, these names jump out because we think they're going to be resilient into what we would call what happens no matter what. Uh, when you talk about LVMH, Walmart, we think there's a barbell consumer, as, as your previous guest talked about. People are trading down, so Walmart's going to do fine. People at the upper end of the uh, economic spectrum kind of spend no matter what. So we think if you barbell the consumer, you're in a good good position there. Uh, when you talk about ASML, you know the world is trying to get away from its dependent on China for chips. And therefore, we're going to have to create new chip manufacturing facilities. Uh, ASML has pretty much got a monopoly on the ultra, high ultraviolet or extreme ultraviolet light production facility. Everyone has to buy their machines. They've got over a two-year backlog. Uh, so if you're going to fix the strategic problem that we have in chips, you're going to have to buy from ASML. And then when you look at the fact that the war in the Ukraine is not going to we're not going to spontaneously break out in peace anytime soon. Mm. Uh, you like to see that. But what's going to happen is you have you have uh, uh, Raytheon and Lockheed Martin are both big suppliers of the key ordinance that's necessary uh, for this fight. We still have the, the new uh, National Defense Authorization Act is going through with a, over 800 million in additional aid to Ukraine. Uh, you have a strong demand signal. You have all of Europe needing to up their defense spending to keep up with their NATO obligations. So we think that regardless of what happens with the economy, big recession, little recession, whatever it is, you're pretty well positioned in defense stocks uh, that are going to need to you know, be used during the current war and also as we rebuild uh, the armories of nations that have been depleted. Well, uh, let me, we 